at this time, ladies and gentlemen, we'd like to welcome to the show our guest for today, Kat Von Hees. Welcome to the show, Kat. Hey, thank you for having me. So, um, I, you know, it seems that you got yourself in an interesting predicament, um, you know, right before you called the show, and uh, w- w- what's going on? People falling apart over there in Canada? Sorry? I said, are people falling apart around you? What's going on? Yeah, um, well, we, we had a little bit of, we had an incident yesterday where my my partner, uh, Bobby Sharp, he just um, he went off the top, and the guy rolled away from uh, an elbow landed on the tip and so getting that checked out and I got a separated shoulder from a reverse DVT so and ladies and gentlemen people want to say wrestling's fake how how fake does that shoulder feel I'm not very fake (laughs) it's quite a bit (laughs) Hulk Hogan said it the best gravity never takes a day off Never. <laughs> All right, so tell us a little bit about Kat Van Hees and how uh, you got into the wrestling business. Um, you know, who were your major influences? You know, what company did you break in with? And what gave you that crazy idea to become a wrestler? I have this crazy idea, like, from a young age. But, I mean, I was, like, if you watch any of my other interviews or anything like that, uh, or Slam Wrestling article on me, I was a bit of a chubby girl growing up, and it wasn't really a realistic goal, everyone kind of put me down so that it was an impossible dream, so eventually you let things defeat you and you just kind of take it and go, okay, I guess I'll find something else to do, and uh, high school came around and I got into amateur wrestling and a bit of jiu-jitsu, and, and then it became more possible once I lost a lot of weight, so I looked into schools and, and trying to find people locally that I could break in with, so um, I broke in with a company called Canadian Wrestling Elite in Winnipeg, Manitoba. Mm-hmm. Canada, and uh, I guess my biggest influences, I would say, definitely would be Chris Jericho. I looked up to him pretty much my whole like teenage years up until now. Even he's always been a big influence in like my wrestling ability, like the style, and and just how uh, determined he was to do a lot of things, not just be a master of one thing, but he did a lot of things. So I'm very much like that. Um, and female wise, they didn't really have too many females I mean outside of like Trish and Lita like the basics but I mean once I got more into the indie scene I really started appreciating Sarah Stock who's also a Winnipeg um, female wrestler she um, she now I don't know if most people are familiar with her but she's Dark Angel in CMLL or yes. Japan so that, that's pretty much where I got my start and, and who I look up to uh, have you done any wrestling uh, outside of Canada maybe like in the US or Japan or Mexico no, I've done um, a couple shows in Vegas for Vendetta Pro. Um, I've done a show in Minnesota for Wrestling Gone Wild. And I briefly did a show uh, with uh, Drew Kennedy Wrestling League, who was partnered up with a show in um, North Dakota. It was a small town, so I can't unfortunately remember the name of it. It was July 1st a few years ago. Um, so that's pretty much all I've done in the U.S. as of right now, but I've been doing a lot in the Western Canada and, and Central Canada. Okay. Um, what do you... Tell us a little bit, just a little bit about your 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 wrestling. Well, you're 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 into bodybuilding as well. I I, I think I read that. Yes. So, did you were you a bodybuilder turn wrestler? Were you a a wrestler that just decided to bodybuild and wrestle at the same time? Like, how did? Because usually it's it's one and then it becomes the other. Are you? How is that working with you? Well, I, I was I did my shows before I, I began training, um, and then once my shows were done, I I looked at a the school finally opened up in Winnipeg, and I uh, joined as soon as it was open, so it was in June of 2011. So my my shows were all in 2010. Um, there's a new competition season coming up next year that I'm planning on doing. Like I haven't really been on stage in a while, so you know, and I relocated in terms of cities of where I live, so finding a new trainer um, who's available all the time to kind of coach me through step by step. Um, so I found a new trainer up here, so we're looking to compete in June 2015 as the new goal anyways. Have you met any other uh, wrestlers, independent-wise or even mainstream-wise, that went the same route, like bodybuilding-wise, and then got into training for wrestling? Um... 
I guess like I, I briefly spoke to Caitlin for a little while. We had a talk last okay. year, and uh, well, that was backstage at SmackDown, and we had a brief like I mean twenty minute half hour conversation about like the pros and cons of it, and like how hard it was for her to maintain things like that. It's it, because it is a really hard lifestyle. It's just for you're not able to train when you want to all the time. You have to train when you have time, and so your diet's got to be pretty point on. But it's also really hard because you're traveling all the time. So, and especially in the Indies, you're in a car with, you know, four or five other people, and you're not exactly you're driving, you know, 16 hours to a show. You're going to hit gas stations and stuff. So you got to be really organized with your food preparation. Yeah. And if you're on the road for two to four weeks, you really don't have, you know, necessarily the resources to cook the food that you need to. to to stay as lean or as uh, at your high level of performance that you need to for, for not only your aesthetic purposes for, but for performance. Well, she's definitely um, one of the better ones to talk to, and she's she's a sweetheart of a person. And um, yeah, we we've had in the past we've had uh, April Hunter on the show and, and Melissa Coates, and um, they they kind of both went the route of uh, bodybuilding into wrestling and. Um, some of them kind of went a different route after that, but we don't talk about that on this show. But um, yeah, <laughs> but uh, you know, we had Melissa coach just recently, and you know, she even said you know it's it's, it's hard because now she wants to kind of get back into training weight uh, weight weightlifting training again, but it, it's hard for her to keep up with the schedule with wrestling and things like that, and you know, kind of just what you said. So it's it's interesting, you know, that we get multiple people that kind of took the same path, and and it's good, you know, it's it's good to hear the the same pros and the same cons of uh, of the industry. But you know, yeah. a lot of people who watch wrestling on TV don't really get it. Like you know, they turn the TV on and they're like, oh, these guys must be millionaires. They probably uh, you know <laughs> take limos to the wrestling event, and you know they don't understand that you're driving from some little. East Bumble Town to some Oshkosh town over here, and you know you're lucky if you get cell phone service. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, who would you say up, up to up to now has been uh, one of your tougher and uh, tougher opponents in the ring? Um. Well, I guess seeing as I wrestle like a lot of guys, to be honest with you, I'd say. Uh, probably more 60% guys and to girls, maybe mm-hmm. even more. Um, I don't know. That's a tough one. I, I, I'd i say, like, I wrestled some, like, a guy named Kato, and he's, like, a, a little bit of a mixed martial arts kind of gimmick, mm-hmm. and uh, he likes to do some, like, luchador type style as well so it's, it's he's he's tough to really work with it but he's also very good to work with he's um but i mean i wrestle a lot of like green green guys too where it's like i'm trying to get them through things and they're really yeah. heavy guys so it's hard for me to just you know it's hard for me to relay that message to the crowd that it is like like yeah i'm a girl but i can take them <laughs> yeah no it's, I mean, I it is hard i mean any anybody that's, that's been to indie wrestling events can uh if you've been to enough shows, you can tell the ones who are very fresh in the company and who the really good wrestlers are. Because the really good wrestlers can can carry pretty much anybody. And when you have that 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 rare instance where that that wrestler just can't carry that person, it's just it's tough because it makes the accomplished wrestler look bad, and it just makes the new person look even worse. And it's just like, oh my god. What a disaster. Yeah. And then you pray that nobody gets hurt. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what I'm always hoping for. Like, like, usually that's not the case. <laughs> Something always goes wrong. I mean, I wrestled this one guy in Calgary a little while ago. He's, you know, like, I give him all credit. He, like, he did pretty well, you know, for what I was expecting and stuff. But, you know, he was, like, like 250, maybe maybe more. Not in just ballparking. He's a big guy. Mm-hmm. And... Like, went up for a body slam, slipped, and, like, I caught him. And then as I was going down, like, to put him for, like, a little stronger slam instead of the body slam because I just had the positioning wrong. Right. Like, he put his foot down, so my, like, just jarred my entire back and caused my back to go into this ma- massive spasm. So she's like, oh. ugh. Sometimes you just can't, you can't predict those things are going to happen. And, like, he's got to go, you got to roll with the punches after that. Yeah. 
And then you, you, you I mean, when, it, when you're like 100 pounds different, it's like it's oh, hard to. I would imagine. You want to be girl versus guy. And you'd be like, I would definitely would have made that guy pay for a massage. That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> What would, would you say has been maybe your best match, uh, like most fluid, like your, your your favorite match that if you had a chance you'd do it over and over? Um, I guess recently I had one with um, Bambi Hall, and I actually had my first, like, I'd say official train match with her uh, when I broke in. Okay. Um, I mean, outside of, like, maybe some tiny things, like, I, that I would change, yeah, like we hadn't worked together in I'd say a year because we we were working together all the time because of all the tours at the CNWA we were doing. Mm-hmm. Um, we did a lot of the Tony Candelo tours together, and then when she moved back to BC, we hadn't seen each other in a year. So she went off and did her own thing and developed a different style, and I went off and did my own thing and developed you know different style as well. So we were like, well, let's see what happens, and you know things came together and, and it worked out really really well and I was really happy with it and I guess I tried tweaking a few things I mean it was it was really a lot of fun and I go back in and do that all the time that's cool um, how can your your fans reach out to Kat Von Hees and find you on social network um, I have a, a Twitter account with at Kat Von Hees um, and then Facebook, same thing. You can just look me up, and I have a fan page. Just you know, like me, and and then I, I usually post all my matches, like what's happening in terms of interviews or you know appearances or anything that's going on, like whether that be an update on my injuries or anything like mm-hmm. that. You kind of can keep tabs on what I'm doing. Get to stop posting your X-rays. <laughs> no, I don't have any X-rays yet, but uh, <laughs> you know, I went for an MR, like I went for a, an ultrasound, and they're like. There's a big hole in your shoulder. Like, oh, thanks for pointing out the obvious. That's great. <laughs> yeah. Like, while you're in there, can you like fill it, please? You know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> what do you What do you got coming up uh, in the media future? Uh, like, well, but <laughs> uh, health. Pro- you know, if you're healthy, what do you got coming up in the media future? Um, I'm supposed to have a show in Moose Jaw for Ringside Wrestling on September 5th. Um, a local Edmonton show that I do every month um, from Monster Pro Wrestling, which is my base company out of Edmonton right now, which is on the 6th. And um, I was actually supposed to have a match today, but I had to postpone that one for evident reasons. And um, I should be in Winnipeg or like surrounding areas at the end of September and hopefully uh, Calgary, a couple shots there as well. So. You never really know what's going to open up. I have a couple of promoters that are interested in bringing down to the States, hopefully for some tours, and then um, hopefully next year I'll be out in the East Coast and break that barrier for my career and, and see where that goes. Let me go to Vegas every year and do the um, Cauliflower Alley Club okay. and uh, work with people down there and network and, and stuff like that. So it's, it's usually like pretty steady. Um, sometimes it's busier than usual. February is probably my busiest month where I do the Tony Cabello Death Tour every year. And uh, that's anywhere from like 15 to 30 matches, sometimes maybe more, depending on what he has booked. So, all right, awesome. Um, I do yeah. uh, appreciate you giving us a call, and uh, we do hope that you uh, you, you heal b- rather quickly and get back out there and do what you love. And uh, definitely Thank stay you. in touch with us, and we'll uh, pass along your 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 information if you send it to us about where you're going to be. We'll post it on our page and. Uh, keep our fans updated as well. Yeah, for sure. If you want to do some tours, I'll shoot some your way so you guys can let them know where I'm going to be. Thank you. <laughs> well, um, all right, go back to uh, taking care of your friend and uh, hope they heal as well. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right, take care. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye. That was Kat Von Hees, ladies and gentlemen, uh, <laughs> currently at the hospital uh, with her with with her partner, and um, they they took some bang got banged up yesterday. So we hope that they uh, get healthy soon and get back out there and, and kick ass like they love to do. Uh, but it's uh it's getting to the time of the show where we got to say goodbye, and um, it's, it just keeps going by for quicker and quicker and quicker. So. Uh, Man, maybe we gotta extend our time to to. I don't know. 
don't know if people want to tolerate me for another 15 minutes.